very much for this uh, session. I wanted to have uh, talk. I'm, I'm, I'm um, um, I work on, um, with, with a number of other uh, we've talked to at this conference of Tamania project we were on. Um, and uh, just, uh, really going to mention it's going to talk about a new project we have of that uh, of the genes enrichment analysis, and it and it might decide to escape. This is developed by Daniela's room, and the program was the plan not here. Um, so I want to thank them up front. So to a little bit to some of the ideas presented in the previous talk, gave it an, a really great introduction. Um, so, uh, the idea is that um, a lot of problems in biology and large scale biology generate, or a lot of technologies in large scale biology generate a lot of results. Um, for instance, somebody does a genetic screen or a microarray analysis and they get 1,000 hits or 1,000 genes, and then they, they're stuck. They're, how do I interpret this? list of 1,000 genes. This is a very common problem. Many people have been on helping interpret gene lists and, and helping biologists uh, with, with problems. Um, and it's, it's just only getting worse because there's a lot more technologies that are generating more amounts of data. The idea is that you want to tell uh, the, the biologist is asking, tell me what's interesting about these genes. Um, and so um, you might, and you might get this gene list from, from ranking or clustering. You might have a ranked gene list. So you you want to know what's 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 interesting. Um, so one way of doing this is trying to find out if this gene is um, enriched in known information, some known information, uh, information about pathways, molecular complexes, or, or databases of this information. And you want to know if um, the gene to information. This is this is uh, particularly useful for bio spent their entire undergraduate and, you know, pretty much their career. This works in that sort of map is in their head. And, and so this, this, this um, into their sort of picture cell works in their head. Uh, and um, there's a number of different methods to do this type of thing. Um, it's kind of like the interest function that was mentioned earlier. Um, an enrichment test, the general framework is you have some experimental data. It could be a list of genes or a ranked list of genes. You do the enrichment test. Um, you test if a given gene set representing a pathway is in statistically sig significantly enriched in the, in the gene set. Um, you test that with all gene sets that you have available, and you apply multiple testing correction, and you calculate a, a value and a Q value. Um, and you you end up with a, a table of enriched genes. So uh, in my experimental data, for instance, the uh, cell death is highly enriched, and that might tell you something about the the results of your experiment. Um, the um, gene ontology. Um, function um, values, etc. The one problem relating over um, and Um, and ability, or you have to do to another part of is to develop. We, we've developed a map. Um, um, that have developed something. idea is that you take these um, the, uh, the circles represent the size 
and a weighted edge. Um, and then you is colored. I used to corrected layout number than like over in a little more deep. Visualization method, it does threshold dependent one or gorilla says uh, um, GSEA which means that enrichment analysis. Change comparing of interest to a consensus results. In this case, your cushion A down. Um, we we take the results. Set called thin is a gene set called cell cycle that has 50 or 200 genes in it. Um, we calculate an enrichment, an, an overlap between gene sets using an overlap um, similarity or, or jacquard, um, and, and we, so the the width of the of the edge is that value basically. Uh, so I'm just going to go through some some different use cases that um, show how this works with specific biological examples, um, just to give you an idea. Um, and I'll introduce some new features that we've, some additional features that we've, um, that, that are part of this um, system as I go on. So um, we have this, uh, uh, we, we, t we found this um, gene expression experiment that treats, it's basically estrogen treatment of breast cancer cells. And there's two time points. Um, basically, you have as, uh, cells at 12 hours and 24 hours and you have treated and untreated cells. Um, and we're using, in this case, the gene ontology um, uh, as our gene set database. So this is the, the results of the enrichment map. Uh, uh, all of the, the, the gene ontology terms of these circles. When we laid it out, we laid out the enrichment map, typically we get a lot of clustering. And this is probably mostly um, a lot of term relationships in the gene ontology, because it's a child term, a parent term, a lot to be highly overlapping with each other. Um, but it's nice to see that there's, you just usually get these really nice clusters. And this gives you a really nice overview of the, of the data set. It's basically saying these processes are, um, are up, are going up in estrogen treatment versus, and these processes are down. Um, we've actually manually um, these circles and these lines in um, just a, an image where, but if you zoom in, you can see the um, actual name of the, the terms. And usually what we do is look at the names of these terms. All these terms are related to microtubules and cytoskeletons. OK, this is the microtubule cytoskeleton section. Um, it's uh, mentioned that gene ontology is um, very, uh, as you know, gene ontology is hierarchical. So you have um, a lot of relationships between the terms. Um, but we uh, this overlap diagram does repeat branches in gene ontology. So this at um, how we would, if you just represented the same, um, but just using the gene ontology directed acyclic graph and, and overlay the, the same. Um, and um, it, we, we, we found different branch ontology, even different sections that are related to each other. So microtubules, the skeletal component, microtubules, the skeleton, and biological process. Um, this ubiquity relation is is spread out into two, is split into two branches, and same with TM. If you just use gene ontology, you can always link related terms together. So this, this really helps. So um, what we, um, one of the, the, the things that's usually quite interesting um, is, um, or the thing that, that people want to do with their data, especially for more complicated designs, like if you have, if you have two time points, as I mentioned, the previous, the previous uh, sample, I, uh, example I should have mentioned is uh, was just for 24 hours. But if you have two time points, 12 hours and 24 hours, um, you want to do enrichment analysis on both 
12 hours treated versus untreated and 24 hours treated versus untreated. Um, so, and then you want to compare them. And that's actually extremely difficult to do with a gene list, if you have lists of gene sets. Um, we, we can color nodes by, um, we, can, we can view the results on the same network, the same enrichment map. Just color the 24 hour one in this case on the outside of the node and the, uh, the 12 hour one on the inside of the node. And this allows you to very, very quickly, in 24 hours, all these processes that are all red here are, are, are they're not really um, different between them. But you can quickly see the degradation is, is uh, ramping up very quickly between uh, um, uh, uh, 12 and 24 hours. Um, so that this sort of allows you to quickly minimize something they might be interested in, and then you kind of you can go through that. So um, we, we just as an example of uh, the actual gene these gene sets data um, behind them. This is gene that represents the map. And you can see that um, uh, this node, this gene here, is high at 12 weeks and low at 24 weeks. And you can see that, um, uh, sorry, 12 hours. Um, so it, it's, uh, and you can see that um, treated is, is very high here for this, gene, for this gene and low in the in treated 12 hours. But they're this, about the same in 24 hours. 24 hours treated versus untreated is not very different, and you see something similar with uh, here. Uh, and this um, heat map view is actually a, a one of the ways that you once you identify an interesting set, an interesting area, you can zoom and see the actual data that led to this. One more um, use case that we've we've found is quite useful. And it's a reset analysis. So once you've de defined an enrichment map, it's useful. Um, uh, it's it's useful to query it um, in in the ways. So um, if uh, I have a, an enrichment that I that we made for um, a mouse model where a mic knocked out, and they looked at the expression of genes in the heart, and a bunch of interesting biological processes that were up and down, um, and um, and these might be related to result to the to the mer one um, so so we took the mer one uh, targets from and we represent that set another another add into the enrichment map after um, and then an overlap score to show how that overlaps all these these uh, processes and as you can see as a lot of mer one Target in the various um, the various sected processes. That's kind of cool. And you can see a little bit more detail. One more um, example um, that I want to we uh, show all of these things together um, in an actual study that we um, just recently about a, a month ago in, in um, about autism. And uh, basically, uh, some collaborators, the, the Steve Scherer's lab in the University of Toronto, um, and a number of other collaborators are studying autism, um, uh, which is a, a very hard um, disease. Uh, twins have between 90 and 60 and 90 percent concordance, and they, they'll get uh, identical twins, at least, will we'll both um, quite a lot of the time, although it depends, um, the, the severity might might um, vary. Um, and there's a lot of uh, single gene deletions, single, um, single genes and rearrangements and copy number variants that have been associated with it. Um, only five, that only explains 5 to 15 percent of uh, the, you know, the genetics of this disease. So um, the share lab and, and the traders look at um, a specific type of mutation, copy number variants, and they had about a thousand controls of European ancestry and they they did copy number variants analysis, although they focused on rare copy numbers. Um, and um, we did a pathway analysis of this data, uh, mostly focusing on the deletions, the gene deletions, uh, using all of these different gene sets, gene ontology, pathways from KEG, and CDN reactor, um, PFOMANES. Um, you can define your gene sets in many different ways. And uh, the result was actually a fairly complicated from that, which 
which sort of interesting for uh, and a answers sort of a few different on this part. So uh, basically, before that, I tell you the okay, uh, processes are high and deletions, all of them. And then we want to also talk about these processes are regions in intellectual disability gene. We did a map on, on the gene sets. And we did a and those are um, uh, the these, these these biological processes are enriched in the list of genes. Uh, all these uh, these other nodes here that that um, things are enriched in autism, uh, and in fat, um, that even though genes are enriched in different biological processes, things that we find in this autism study are in known in the build genes or a of um, the results. And actually, I'll be completely new in this study. So that was interesting. If you just did things gene by gene, so that means of individual genes with autism. So we uh, uh, have a uh, Again, um, does it connect files from tools um, maps, as I show you the heat map or interest that those names are highlighted? The, um, the uh, The enrichment string version of the uh, uh, below the, just they, they remove from the graph intro that, that that's interesting for you. So what we want to do is um, the key is nice right, to view the if you have gene expression data. Uh, I mean the things that expression data on uh, list below the heat map. But one thing that would be generally useful for any type of start off with the map is a very nice, nice overview of interest in this case and then go go and the data that that rooted, um, that that this uh, the nodes here is called real maps and that was from Reactome um, in the next talk. And so you can go to Reactome, um, get the downloaded and, and buy a form of the Cytoscape, and zoom on a, on a name that's be quite um, fun. And that would be interesting, an interesting area. Going into more details and putting in names that underlie genes. In the doing, I told you that the the enrichment map and also the um, the labels. Um, we have a, a, a Google Summer of Code, code students in Brown um, who is trying to think of where we call it a semantic summary. It's sort of um, make all of the the text. That's associated. We can see these clusters here. We want to try to figure out how to label so this um, black lives. These are more like really signaling. And the word signaling uh, sort of is frequent, frequently found in them. And so the enrichment map was we had fun with that. Um, and Ruth, when she was programming it, she baked it into a delicious. So, I'm glad meeting, so that was um, 
very clear statement. Uh, and I'd just like to um, acknowledge uh, Ruth who baked the cookie and, and, do the, and uh, program the entire Recitoscape plugin. Um, Daniel, um, uh, who uh, came up with the, the idea. Oliver is another postdoc in the lab who worked a lot on, the, on this plugin. And this was also done with, in collaboration with Andrew Rooney, sort of necessitating the, it was ne uh, necessitated by the large proteomics data that Andrew was, was developing that we're, that we're studying. So um, with that, I'd like to thank you for listening and take questions. Uh, I made a sort of uh, compa comparing uh, microRNA prediction uh, prediction lists uh, with each other. So from a screen, uh, get a list of microRNAs and then compare their predicted targets to each other. And I sort of noticed if you have a long list and using the Fisher as exact test to cluster them uh, together, then the long lists tend to attract always more uh, uh, more connections, so uh, maybe the Fisher's test isn't sort of quite independent of the um, size of the list. So is your way of clustering there, because the lists are quite different sizes, is your way more independent of the size of the list, or is this um, mathematically known that this is a problem? So, um, so that's an interesting question. Um, that's generally a problem with Fisher's exact test, and um, generally we're, we're not using that test because um, uh, ideally we'd want to not have not set a test requires you to set a threshold and define a set of genes. If we have ranked genes, we prefer to use them and consider a test like GSEA, which doesn't, doesn't, doesn't depend on, on, doesn't have that problem. Um, but our visualization method does not depend on that either because it's, in, it's sort of um, any, and you, you do the enrichment outside of this thing with whatever, whatever you want, and then you can visualize it. Yeah, I know, I know, but you're still uh, clustering lists. You're still, uh, Basically, using lists, when you generate the initial enriched uh, lists uh, with GSA, but you are connecting the lists themselves to each other using some other other tests because that's just list data. Yeah. So, uh, you, what tests are you using? Okay. There? Okay. So we use either the overlap coefficient, which is sort of the um, the intersection of the two sets over the minimum size of the set, or the Jacquard coefficient, um, which I think is over union, um, and um, those are those have pros and cons. Um, we've also tried. We're trying to experiment with different different um, um, versions of overlap statistic to, to try and find something that works well in most most cases. But for instance, if you have a, a small set that overlaps with the, that that is completely a subset of a big set, um, that might be different than two big sets that that have a small a small. Um, Overlap, and you want to kind of maybe differentiate those. And um, the overlap statistic we're still working on in terms of um, we're we're still optimizing. But I think that's what you're asking. Okay, thanks. Yes. Um, you mentioned problems of using the Go when you get the enrichment is that you get the list and they don't really represent the mix how they're related. Um, is there any plan to take into account the uh, hierarchy of the Go, or is it just um, we we don't take the hierarchy into account explicitly, um, and that's good for us because not all gene lists we look at um, are hi have that hierarchy associated with them. Um, but uh, we do implicit sort of uh, implicitly take it into to consider it by um, this overlap statistic. So if you have a child term and a parent term, uh, the child term is usually the genes is this in that term or associated with that term or subset of the genes associated with parent term, and the overlap statistic. Um, will we'll be, um, depending on the overlap statistic that we choose, um, that you'll get a very thick edge for that type of relationship, and so you'll see that, but you'll also see other overlaps, other types of overlaps. Well, it seems um, like the, the last thing you mentioned there, we're uh, you know, trying to pick out the big words that are these clusters. It seems that if you take the hierarchy into account, you'll kind of get that information to begin with. Uh, that's a really interesting idea. So far, we're, we're just doing this. Um, We'll think about that. 